Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, this is the Tom O'Brien Show. Let's take a look before we get into everything. Of course, NVIDIA smashed earnings. There's fantastic microsystems as well. Uh, Lee Auto is getting uh, hit with a U.S. class action lawsuit. We're going to go over all of this. Let's take a look at what we got going on right now. Well, the E-mini is off about 0.99%. The Russell Future is off about 2%. NQ is down slightly as well at 0.83% to the downside, and then the Dow futures at 1.62%. Now, gold is having a little bit of a pullback day as well. Uh, we're down about 2.37%. Same with silver and copper as well. Now, copper really uh, got hit quite a bit yesterday. We we're trading at a high of about almost 520, trading right now at 477. Now, it's probably just a momentary pullback after making some pretty strong highs, but it remains to be seen what will happen. Crude oil itself is coming down as well, uh, which is certainly interesting considering that we're getting into the summer months. Of course, as I've said multiple times and a lot of news outlets have reported as well, uh, we have a lot of crude oil. However, it is still interesting to see this come down a little bit too. Be interesting to see if we can hit that 70 range as well. Tesla at 173.92, trading off about 3.4%. Uh, their new There are new job openings uh, for Tesla, which is uh, regarding AI and really autopilot, which is, you know, particularly strange since they got rid of a lot of the workforce, or a good size of the workforce, rather. And then the dollar is back up into that 105 trading range, but just slightly. Uh, let's talk a little bit about NVIDIA. They're doing a 10 to 1 reverse, which is cool. And uh, let's see what we're at right now. Did we crack 1,000? Yes, we did. And we are above 1,000 as well, up 8.38%. Now, this is honestly some pretty crazy numbers so let's talk a little bit about it uh nvidia's first quarter results released on the bell uh excuse me after the bell yesterday showed adjusted earnings per share about 612 on revenue of 26 billion again we were talking yesterday i think the a lot of the analysts were looking at a 518 um and others were looking at 565 eps uh on roughly the same amount of revenue although a little bit higher uh, pretty impressive. This is a jump of 461% and 262% respectively uh, from a year ago. The company also announced a 10 for 1 stock split and an increase. Did I say reverse split? It's just a stock split. And an increased dividend following some of its big tech peers in doling out heftier quarterly payments to shareholders. Analysts were expecting adjusted EPS of 565 on revenue of $24.6 billion. That's according to data from Bloomberg. Uh, the company reported adjusted EPS of 109 on revenue of 7.19 billion in the same quarter last year. Unbelievable. Uh, in this current quarter, Nvidia expects revenue of 28 billion plus or minus 2%. So this is from Jensen Huang. Okay, he said our data center growth was fueled by strong and accelerating demand for generative AI training and inference on the Hopper platform. Uh, beyond cloud service providers, generative AI has expanded to consumer internet companies and enterprise sovereign AI, automotive and healthcare customers, creating multiple multi-billion dollar vertical markets for sure. And then we have news as well that Microsoft is going to put uh, essentially chat GPT onto the computer. And it'll be able to do things um, natively on that computer. So it doesn't need to communicate with the cloud and for everything, uh, definitely for a lot of what we know uh, from generative AI, will need to connect to the internet. But this idea, and in the, in the, they haven't dis, uh, maybe explained it as much, but the way that I kind of see this is, you know, if you click, you know, the Windows key right now, you can type in things. There's troubleshooting you can do on this computer. Uh, you know, say you need to find something or clear out file system or, or look into some directory, you can just tell the AI what to do. And this is something I've been saying that we've been moving towards, and this idea of increasing graphical user interface, okay? And, and this is that concept in its purest form, right? In the beginning of computers, you had to punch stuff into a terminal, okay? Or even before that, you, you actually really had to like code, right? Th even throw in some binary early, early on. And then you got the command prompt, and then you had graphical user interfaces where I can click here and, you know, click that little file system and go in and, and so on. But there are still parts of the computer um, that I would say the ways of approaching it and kind of analyzing what's going on in your computer are a bit arcane. And so something like GPT-5, which will be put 
onto these machines uh, will, will completely eliminate any need to, I think, really understand uh, the technical of, of how to work on your computer and how to get the most out of it. It's just super interesting. Uh, I can't wait to see what kind of happens with that. I mean, this, this is, again, pushing the idea of, of making technology easier to enter into. Uh, it's pushing it to its, its far logical conclusion, which is pretty neat. So Wall Street analysts have previously raised concerns about the share of NVIDIA's data center revenue that comes from hyperscalers like Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, and other big tech names. Uh, that's especially true as those companies roll out their own AI accelerator chips. Uh, Wong pushed back against concerns that the company could face demand lulls. It shifts between its current and next generation of AI chips. And this is super interesting because I was talking about this might be a legitimate problem for them. Uh, he says, people want to deploy these data centers right now. I think they want to put our graphic processing, the GPUs, uh, to work right now and start making money and start saving money. And so that demand is just so strong. NVIDIA's data center revenue jumped 427% year over year to $22.6 billion. That's accounting for 86% of the company's total revenue uh, for the quarter. The gaming segment, <laughs> which, again, this is kind of what NVIDIA really started off as, um, which was previously its most important business, saw revenue of $2.6 billion. Wow. I mean, really talk about, like, knockout numbers for NVIDIA. Very interesting. And so right now we're trading at 1,023. Then I believe we had, if I can get this to load, we also had microsystems uh, pop up pretty significantly today as well. Excuse me, super micro. Let me pull this up here. So that's actually down right now, but we're trading at 838. Uh, so earlier, it soared as much as 11.3% on Thursday morning. This was good earnings report. Super micro investors saw NVIDIA's success story as a good sign. Then, it, obviously, this we're trading down right now at 4%, roughly at, you know, down 3.87. Uh, it faded later in the day, just probably because people want to get a sell-off if they've been, you know, <laughs> if you, you know, buy at this point, you get hit on this downdraft, you get this nice pop-up. Probably just some selling in this. Again, Super Micro is still, let's be real, all these big kind of names are, are here to stay for the short term at least. Definitely for the long term, I would argue as well, but definitely the short term. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.